I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? This is a PayPal request for Sean. Thank you so much for that. For people who want to request pretty much any type of video, review, topic, reaction, whatever, you do request it either directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is a film that I did not know anything about called 12 and Holding. And pretty much it's a coming of age drama. And, you know, not, not a bad film. It's not really my cup of tea, as in this is not what I go out and search for, but it's not a bad film because the the kid actors did their jobs well. They were not irritating. The story held my interest to see where it was going with the direction of these three kids and their stories. And sometimes that's all you can ask for in this type of film. Does it have a good story and do their do the cast do their jobs well? In this case, I do say yes to both. Because the setup of the film is you have four kids, two, they're twin brothers. One of them likes to wear this hockey mask. He even mentions Friday the 13th. Like, Friday the, Jason from Friday the 13th had one. He's a badass. And you come to realize why he has a hockey mask on because he has his big birthmark on his face. There's his twin brother. There's a kid who's a bit overweight, and then there's this girl who has a therapist for a mother. And so one of the first things she talks about is she's menstruating, she needs a tampon. I'm like, I don't need to hear this from a 12-year-old whatever girl, all right? Was this cuties over again? What she didn't bring with the thing of cuties, what's hypocritical and what's not of it? I've always maintained everyone's hypocritical in some way. So would this film be canceled? I don't know. I still don't want to see cuties. You're hypocritical. Fine. We're all hypocrites. At least the movie's not all about that either. I like something like cuties. But get into this. What happens one of the twin brothers throws stuff at these bullies that's trying to get to their treehouse. And the bully's like, okay, we're going to come back for revenge. And they find out that the bullies are going to fuck up the treehouse. So the brother with no marks on his face asks the, his twin who has the hockey mask, are oh, you going to come with me? No. Well, fine, you're just a pussy then. That guy goes with the overweight kid to the treehouse. The bullies come by. They don't know there's anyone in the treehouse. They think it's just the treehouse itself. They want to burn it down, so they throw Molotov cocktails. Which leads to the one twin brother getting killed. The overweight kid falling, getting hurt. I like that the bullies at least act realistic. Yes, of course, there would be people be like, yeah, fine, fuck them, burn. 
yes, granted, that would happen as well. But here, one runs off, and the other, he's trying to help the overweight kid, trying to help him get up. But then he leaves anyway. And so what the story becomes is how do these three kids deal with the death of this kid who is their friend? And for one, his twin brother. And the movie goes back and forth with each of their stories. Uh, the, the overweight kid, when he got hurt, he got a loss of smell. So that hurts uh that affects his taste so when he's eating stuff he's like he can't taste it much but he doesn't like the feel of it and someone goes why don't you eat an apple maybe you like the feel of that and he starts liking he starts eating apples his family going you know you can't just eat apples all the time and the kid's like why not so his story is wanting to get healthier and lose weight and I don't know why his family is pushing away from that. Usually parents would beg for that, but his parents are pushing away from that. Is that a typical thing that happens? Just, maybe that's new to me. But yeah, that direction. Uh, the, the girl trying to talk with her therapist mother and they don't get along the best. She wants to see her father. The mom's like, no, he abandoned us. And she falls for one of her mom's patients, played by Jeremy Renner. Which Jeremy Renner, he did a good job in this. He plays a firefighter. He has some type of trauma that we find out later on what it is. And it was cool to see Jeremy Renner. I like him as an actor. And uh, he, like I said, he did a good job in this. And she starts to fall for him. And she tries to seduce him. No, it doesn't work out. It's not that kind of movie, thankfully. But it's her being confused and trying to find someone to latch on to in some way and then the twin brother the one who's got the birthmark on him it's him trying to deal with the death of his brother thinking maybe his parents they liked him more than the one who survived and I, I would say with the writing I liked it because it didn't go into too many predictable like cliche routes what I mean by that is I could easily see this type of story going, the parents going, well, you should have died, not him. And like the parents really being adamant that they prefer the dead one to him. They don't do that. The reason they do that in a lot of other movies is to create dramatic effect. But then you just lose. Not that it's unrealistic because sadly there are parents who would feel that way, but it's this. I know you're just doing it for dramatic effect and you're reaching and it's like, okay, can you, like this one I thought, no, the father is just trying to do the best that he can. He's like, you know what? I love you, son. I just want to clean. You want to help clean? And the kid's like, do I have to? Oh, no, no, you don't. So he knows that his dad's trying to deal with it and failing a little bit, but trying. His mom, a bit depressed. And there's a moment where you're always like, you, you liked him more than me. And she's like, no. Well, you, uh, later on, you adopt this other kid to replace him. No, we talked about adoption for years. And uh, like I said, they didn't go the one percent predictable route. And this other thing, which I thought was interesting, is that the kid would go to the juvie hall that the two bullies are at. And for months, he would just go there, talk on the phone, and be like, you kill my brother. You know, when you get out here, I'm going to kill you. Which maybe in, in your mind you think it's ridiculous because the kid is so much smaller than the bullies. But I thought that the kid did a good job acting. And even the bullies like, oh yeah, whatever. But then with the conviction the kid says this, it makes the bully like pause. And I just thought with that and like the story of the overweight kid, the directions it goes in at times seems a bit outrageous. But again, I will say it's not as predictable as I would think it would be. And it made the story a bit more interesting. So I would definitely say it's it's worth a look. Spoilers starting right now. 
What I mean by a little bit unpredictable, like the overweight kid, the rest of his family goes off on a trip, it's just him and his mom. The overweight kid locks his mom in the basement because he worries about his mom, he wants his mom to eat healthier, she of course fights against it, accidentally there's a gas leak, and the mom's able to break out. And it, again, it doesn't go into, let's have a dramatic effect, like, why did you do this? It's more like, oh, I'm worried about my son, let's get the fuck out of here. And even at the hospital, he apologizes, like, you know what, I didn't tell your dad. You know, I don't know if I can do this whole thing. It's easy for you to say, and the kid goes, no, it's not. Okay, I'll try. And it ultimately does end up with them eating healthier. Granted, the way it went that is not what I <laughs> would have thought it would have. But okay, like I say, it made the story a little bit interesting, a little bit unique. Uh, the girl, she tries to seduce him, Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner just goes off, calls the mom. And then he goes, in a weird way, she helped me because I could now tell my story to you. That I was a firefighter. I saw this girl during one of my uh, rescue attempts. She was badly burned. She bade me to kill her. I did it. And she had the same look that your daughter had that night, which makes the mom. Actually, the mom is played by Annabella Stiora, which is the actress I've seen in other films. Then, for the bit role she has, she does a good job. Oh, funny enough, I didn't mention. Uh, I thought he would be in the film more, but it's like a cameo. Mark Lynn Baker is a teacher. He's in like one scene. And if you don't know who that is, that's. Uh, Perfect Strangers, the TV show Perfect Strangers. It starred two people. One of them was Mark Lynn Baker, whose cousin was Belky, played by Bronson Pinchot. He played Larry, that was his character's name, Larry. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute, I know who that is. Holy shit, he's in this film? I'm like, well, damn, like, I recognize him. He's only in like one scene as a teacher. Damn. I have to wonder on a tangent. How is that? I mean, obviously he's a working actor. Maybe he knew the director, something else. But I just wonder how that goes where you'd have to be the star of a TV show for years. And this was 2006 this came out. Now I can only get a job as a teacher for a 30 second screen time role in a movie barely anyone has heard of <laughs> I mean maybe for him it's like hey I get to work but it's like man can you imagine that you get to be the star of a TV show for years and years and years very successful TV show and now that's where your career went I did on one hand if he's happy he's happy that's cool I just that happens to a lot of people that's sad not in a way, oh, he's sad and pathetic. Oh, fuck yeah. But more like, ah, oh, that's too bad. He couldn't get any, like, bigger roles or something. But, you know, that's just how it goes. And then the, the, you know, the, the daughter and her mom, they form a bond more so. And then the, the twin brother, the kid with the birthmark on his face, he, starts befriending the bully because one of them committed suicide in juvie and the kid's like okay seems like he's getting along with this other bully hey my family doesn't care about me let me run away f with you but then when you find oh no the family does care about him and then the mom says oh man i wish that other one would die which is a uh, understandable because the two did kill it was an accident, granted, but did kill her kid. And then the end of the film is kind of dark, where he pretends he's going to go with this kid. It's raining out. He's wearing his hockey mask. Go to a place where it's like a construction site. Has a gun and shoots the bully. Buries him in the cement. Or buries him in this place. Where the next day cement goes over and he gets away with it. Gets away with shooting a bully and killing him. 
as I like a rousing event because the bully the bully felt sorry about it and he wasn't it wasn't like oh yeah fuck you and fuck your brother it wasn't that manner I think that was done on purpose because they didn't want oh they feel like it was in a way, it was unjustified, in a way. Like, you, you get that he cares about his brother, and you killed my brother, but it was an accident, and the bully... The bully was nice enough to him that when he thought the kid needed to go along with him, he's like, fine, you can come along with me to New Mexico. And, uh... Like, you can kind of understand both frames of mind that what he did was right or wrong, Whichever answer you pick, you can make an argument. And no one finds out. I mean, the only nitpick I have, or one of the only nitpicks I have, it would have been nice if there's at least one last scene with the three kids doing something together. Because it's about these three kids, and it seems like there's not a whole lot of the three of them together. In the first half, there's a couple. In the second half, really, not so much because they're all doing their own stories. Like I said, at the end, it would have been nice. At least one final scene with the three kids out doing something together. But that's not the case. But, you know, it's a story about... You know, this big event in each of their lives is turning point. And, uh, yeah. Again, the story was interesting enough that kept me invested to see where it was going. Again, didn't predict exactly where it was going, which made it a bit more interesting. And the actors did their jobs well. The kids were not annoying or irritating. They conveyed their emotions fairly well without being over the top or chintzy or cringeworthy. Yeah, cool to see people like Jeremy Renner in there. And overall, you're not a bad film. And yeah, not a film I typically go out to see, but not a bad film at all. Worth a look if you're open and into dramas. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.